fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom. And the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. The War of 1812 was actually fought between 1812 and 1815, but it started in June of 1812 when President James Madison and other congressmen decided that they should declare war on Britain. Well, they did this for a couple of reasons, one of which was to avenge what had happened with many American sailors being taken off of ships and being impressed into the British Navy. And with these affronts in mind, and also with the idea that possibly they could take Canada and bring Canada into these United States, they began the War of 1812 with an initial victory very soon of Captain Hull over the uh, uh, British. They uh, actually had a good victory with the Ironsides over the British ship, the Guerriere was a land fight of some sorts, but it, like they say these days, it's complicated. You had some things going around in the Buffalo, Detroit area. You also had the uh, capture of Maine. The, the, the state of Maine was actually invaded by the British. The people of Maine very quickly surrendered. And then you also had the invasion of Washington, D.C. and later Baltimore. You see what happened, the British had just finished fighting Napoleon in the first phase of the uh, war with Napoleon, and so they had fresh troops that could come in and begin to do something over in these United States. And so the British thought with this strength becoming available, they could actually go in and capture Washington, D.C., which they did, and burn Washington, D.C., which they also did. And then General Robert Ross decided to lead his land troops up toward Baltimore, where he thought he could have an easy victory. Well, what happened was is that General Ross was shot and killed, and so one of his subordinates took over. They came up across the defenses of the uh, militia that Maryland had raised, and they decided not to attack, especially after they heard the word that the naval attack against Fort McHenry was not successful. Now this is where we got the poem that later became the Star Spangled Banner as our national anthem. But one of the most critical parts of the war was fought in southern Alabama. You see, General Packenham, who took over the command of the troops after Robert Ross was killed, decided that he should attack New Orleans. And he was going to do this by landing at Mobile Bay. Well, it had happened that just a year before, in uh, August of 1813, uh, the Creek Indians had massacred about 500 American settlers. It was a horrible massacre. This massacre had occurred within about an hour. And so there was a colonel of militia by the name of Andrew Jackson who decided to go down to southern Alabama and avenge this horrible deed. Well, he gets to southern Alabama, and the British are starting to land their troops there. 
Well, the British incorrectly guessed that the American spies had tipped off the Americans to the plans of the British. So Pakenham decided to withdraw his troops after a small skirmish, and he decided to attack New Orleans through the underbelly, coming in through the swamps of Louisiana. Well, he didn't get very far, so he tried to make a deal with the pirate Jean Lafitte, but Jean Lafitte, being a good Frenchman, he'd have nothing to do with this British general. In fact, Jean Lafitte decided to go tell the American governor of Louisiana, William C.C. C. Claiborne, that the British were coming. Now, Claiborne had been trying to catch Lafitte for being a pirate, so he threw some of Lafitte's men into jail. Well, luckily for the Americans, Andrew Jackson had correctly guessed that the true British target was New Orleans. So he force marched his men into the city, declared martial law, and met with uh, Lafitte and Claiborne in Lafitte's blacksmith shop on Bourbon Street in New Orleans. There they planned the defense of the city. You see, uh, nine miles below the city, there was a place called Rodriguez Canal. And the British, if they were going into New Orleans, would have to go across a narrow neck of land between the Mississippi River and the swamps. And so it turned out that they decided to put their defense right at this narrow neck of land in an old logging canal. Well, very quickly, the Americans uh, raised a, a parapet there, and uh, by putting in uh, the, the mud and cotton bales and anything you could get their hands on, built somewhat of a wall that the British would have to surmount. At the same time, Andrew Jackson decided to make a night attack in December of 1814 against the British camp. It was more of a raid to set them off and actually to demoralize them uh, from having uh, marched through the swamps. Now they didn't know when the Americans were to be attacking them. The plan worked because, you see, as the British went up to go attack the Americans, they didn't attack with the force that they probably should have. And in fact, there were 2,000 British casualties, but only 13 American casualties, making it one of America's greatest military victories ever. In 1814, we took a little trip along with General Jackson down to mighty Mississippi. Took a little bacon and we took a little beans And we fought the bloody British near the down in New Orleans Fired our guns and a British camp a coming Wasn't as many as it was a while ago Fired once more, we began running them Down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico We looked down the river and we see the British come Must have been a hundred of them beating on the drums Stepped so high and they heard the bugles ring While we stood beside our cotton bales and didn't say a thing Fired our guns and the British camp were coming Wasn't as many as it was a while ago Fired once more, we began a running Down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico Old Hickory said we could take him by surprise We didn't fire a musket till we looked him in the eyes Held our fire till we see the faces well Opened up the squirrel guns and really gave them well We fired our guns and the British kept a coming Wasn't as many as it was a while ago Fired once more, we began a running them Down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico Ran through the briars and you ran through the brambles Ran through the bushes where a rabbit wouldn't go Ran so fast, hounds couldn't catch him Down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico Fired our cannon till the barrel melted down Then we grabbed an alligator and we fought another round Filled his head with cannonballs and powdered his behind And when we touch a gator off, the gator lost his mind Fired our guns and the British kept a coming Wasn't as many as it was a while ago Fired once more, he began a running Down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico Ran through the briars and they ran through the brambles And they ran through the bushes where a rabbit wouldn't go Ran so fast that the hounds couldn't catch him Down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico Down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico Down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico, the Gulf of Mexico.